Matthew Holt with Healthcare Blog. And I'm talking to one of my uh, old friends and colleagues uh, from way back when in the blogging world, Jacob Ryder, then who spent a long time at Allscripts and even a longer time at ONC, where he was at one point deputy director for uh, health information technology in the country. And since then, uh, has been doing a lot of interesting stuff. So, Jacob, you've got uh, some new interesting stuff to talk about. Um, and you've been telling me about new types of organizations in New York State that I knew nothing about. But you're now in the world of uh, community care and social determinants of health. But let's start off. You are the uh, CEO of the Alliance for Better Health. Yes. Which is in uh, upstate New York. Tell me a bit about what the, man what the Alliance for Better Health is and what its mandate is, and then we'll get on to what you're doing that's new and interesting. Okay. Alliance for Better Health is one of 25 organizations in New York uh, called a performing provider system. And what uh, performing provider systems do is uh, we work in our communities to um, prevent Medicaid members from using uh, medical services unnecessarily. And so ideally, if these folks that we serve are more healthy, they won't need to go to the emergency department necessarily. And so the overall goal of the program, which is called DISRIP, Delivery System Reform Incentive Payment Programs, and they're DISRIP programs in many states, including yours, Matthew. California has one. I'm sure. Uh, so so uh, the DISRIP goal is to reduce unnecessarily, an unnecessarily or, or preventable acute care utilization by 25%. Um, and so far, we're not quite at that goal, but as a state, we're doing reasonably well at uh, improving the health of our communities and therefore reducing preventable acute care utilization. Very good. Okay. So now you have just come up with a new way for enhancing this and doing some figuring out ways to, to, to get this done uh, around this whole issue. And, and obviously the social terms of health has been a big deal. There's now even you know, venture funds deliberately, like Andy Cyrus, del del deliberately thinking about investing in it. One of the companies you're working with is one of their investees, Unite Us. So yeah. talk to you about the, uh, the, new, the new plan you're launching. So what we've done is we, we, we've looked at where the most impactful investments that we've made in the last few years have been in our community. And you, know, you get the most bang for your buck, and I, I think Andy would agree with this, is the community-based organizations which create a safety net of services in our communities um, that are, have been for years laser focused on improving the health of the people they serve. Um, and what we think of as health is different from what I learned in medical school. You know, what I learned was physical health is health. What this, this whole uh, recent wave of, of recognition of social determinants has started to you know, percolate through our communities is that social, it's good we have the video here, right? The social health bucket and the behavioral health bucket are important precedents and important components of physical health. And if we address the social and behavioral health needs of our communities, the, the physical health of our communities will be improved. And so we recognize that the, these organizations um, historically have not worked well together as a group. They have not been connected well to each other as a group. They've been dependent on either state or federal or foundation grant funding, which means that you know, if they hit the jackpot one year, they grow and then they lose their funding and then they recede. And sometimes I, I heard one of these organizations recently call themselves a chameleon because they change their color based on funding that they get, which is attached to the, you know, sort of interests of whichever funding organization has funded the most recently. And so I looked at what's happened in, in the physician world. So you know, if we look at, at nationally how many physicians have retained the, their autonomy and yet have been able to do things in the domain of population health and starting to do analytics and you know, pulling things together, well, physicians have created IPAs, independent practice associations, sometimes called independent uh, physician associations. And, and so what we did here was we used that model and we said, look, let's apply that to community-based organizations. So we created an IPA. We actually got New York State um, approval for the creation of this entity. It is an IPA. We called it Healthy Alliance IPA. And right now we have uh, 29 organizations in upstate New York that have joined the IPA. The purpose of the IPA is to pull them all together 
to create a technical infrastructure that connects them to each other and connects them to the, the um, medical community, um, and then uh, negotiates with various funding activities um, on their behalf. And so the, what we're announcing this week is the first of what we hope to be many uh, contracts with managed care organizations, health plans, insurance companies, depending on what we call them this week, um, so, that, so that we're saying, hey, health plan, you think this is a good idea to invest in social and behavioral health. We think it's a good idea too, and we're gonna assure the health plans that services are gonna be provided that align with the needs of our communities, we're pulling it all together, um, and then uh, writing a contract between the IPA and the health plan. So, so that, that, that's really uh, exciting, really new. Um, and as you said, I, I think uh, you said in your release that it's the first time you think it's been done, and I think it probably is. We, ha we heard about plans individually paying for housing and paying for, mm -hmm. you know, Kaiser putting in farmers markets and what have you, but actually connecting this all together. So how's this gonna work in practice? I am somebody who shows up at a food bank um, somewhere in upstate New York, and I perhaps, you know, what happens next? Is the person behind the counter gonna ask me questions about my mental health needs? What's, what's actually gonna happen? Do they have sure. technology to plug it in? Tell me what the sort of, so the, so the intake process at each of the organizations where, uh, that, that have joined the IPA, intake process will include the typical thing that happens when you, um, you know, first enter one of these facilities, you give them your name and your, you know, uh, answer a few questions about yourself. And all of that information is entered into our technology platform, which we call Healthy Together. Um, so Healthy Together is our technical framework. Every, you'll, type in the person bringing you in, will type in some information, and then might ask you some questions about other needs that you might have. Either there are medical needs, or do you have housing needs, or transportation needs, or behavioral health needs. And those needs will get captured, and then you'll be asked, do you want to um, have a referral made to have any of these needs addressed? And if you say yes, then um, that individual will refer to you to other organizations in our community that provide these services. And this is the sort of the connectivity, the web of connectivity that previously didn't, um, didn't exist in a, in a meaningful way. Certainly these organizations may have had each other's phone numbers and somebody might have written a phone number down and given it to you on a sticky note. But with this system, we can make sure not only does the referral get to the right place, we can make sure that the people on the other end are accountable to catch the referral and to address those needs. And we have staff who watch the whole network and make sure, sort of like air traffic control, that nobody falls off the screen. So that we make sure that everybody who has needs that need addressing, get those needs addressed, and we make sure that we close the loop on every single person. And is your guess uh, or is your assessment that, that most of these connections are gonna be from social development, from us? Uh, what you call CBO, you know, community event organization to, to, to a similar one? You know, is it somebody dealing with food, talking about transportation or housing? Or is this going in and out of the healthcare system as well? It's in and out. So our experience so far has been that many of the referrals from, come from medical and into social care providers, and also from social care providers, both as you described, to each other, but from social care providers into healthcare providers. So this provides an alternative you know, historically, somebody with a medical need in one of these facilities, it wasn't uh, an infrequent event for somebody to call 911 because they just felt like they were out of their scope and they didn't know how to handle something. They don't have medical training. They got concerned that because they didn't have medical training, gosh, I don't know what to do and maybe I should just call 911. So then it's an ambulance call and it's a trip to the emergency department when in fact maybe, you know, a Lyft or Uber to a primary care doctor would have been just fine. And so we're facilitating the, the uh, primary care uh, visit if that's a more appropriate thing to happen next. Um, because so, all, go ahead. Great, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the, the connection here with health plans, right? So uh, MVP Healthcare is, is sort of the first one to sign on. They put a bit of money in the bot to mm -hmm. start off with, but uh, you're hoping this becomes a sort of business relationship in which, in which the, the your organization isn't doing the funding, but that others presumably could, you and others could copy this and have more plans to figure out a way to pay for this. So how do you think that's gonna work? 
Well, we're in conversations with several other health plans in addition to MVP. So MVP is the first, but they won't be the only um, because we, what we wanna see is all of the health plans in a community um, supporting it. So it's the, you know, as some would say, all, all ships rise to this tide. Um, so that the, the health plans all um, make an investment because ultimately the health plans are all reaping the benefits of a community that's more healthy. And so far we do have other plans that are interested and we're working out the details of exactly what those investments are gonna look like. But do you think this is kind of a sort of community benefit investment like you know the, the plans will portray as being something we're doing good for the community or do you think it's something that will actually have like real replacement of money they are spending on current health services that you, you know there'll be a CPT code for this or what? That's the wrong thing, but you know what I mean? Yeah. So. So we don't see the health plans paying fee for service, if that's the question. I don't think that that's the right model. Um, we may in fact have the IPA paying fee for service and that's, that's why the IPA exists, right? To provide a repeatable funding stream. So we would see the IPA as writing contracts writ large for perhaps on an attribution basis um, with health plans um, and then we would allocate the funds perhaps based on community needs and you know sort out the relationships with all of the community-based organizations um, I, as you as you may know some states and soon to be new york um, are uh, including spend on these social services in medical loss ratio and so this isn't just philanthropy and sort of community benefit investments that these health plans are making they're they're making these investments instead of the investments that they're making in sending fee-for-service dollars or even value-based payment dollars to health systems and at-risk care delivery organizations. So this is, this is very much a sort of uh, included in MLR, to use insurance company speak, uh, which it, we think is a very big deal. Yeah, so you're basically providing an infrastructure here for them to, to start thinking about how to spend more holistically, which is yes, the great exactly. Idea. Um, last question on this is they're working with Unite Us, I mentioned at the very start, um, right through a new company, just got raised a bunch of venture capital from Town Hall Ventures uh, and a few others. I think, uh, yep. now it's Oak was their now. lead. Oh, was yeah. Oak? Oak was their lead. You just think Ventures. Oak would have no more money left, they just raised another 800 million bucks. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, and you mentioned, I think it's Healthy Together, you said was your system, is that the right name? Yeah. Uh, how much of Healthy Together is a white label Unite Us and what do they do and what do you do? What do you have to so, do? To Fine. Healthy Together is our local instantiation of the Unite Us framework. So, so uh, we're, the, the way that our community understands it, it's Healthy Together. But it's Healthy Together that, that it, the infrastructure, the technology behind the Healthy Together network is Unite Us's technology. And yeah. we'll, we'll add some pieces to that in addition to what we have from Unite Us. Um, there's a a project that we're working on we're calling Share My Health, uh, which we're really excited about and hope to talk with you more about that next month um, when we bring it into production. But the short version is it's a way for an individual at who's getting services from a community-based organization to share their health data with that community-based organization. Because as you know, many CBOs are not covered entities, so they can't sign a business associates agreement. They can't kind of receive medical information from medical providers, um, but they can get medical information from the individuals and we're making it really easy for the individuals to get and then share their health data with the CBOs. So if you're a you know, food provider, you wanna know if somebody's got food allergies or if they have specific um, you know, medical dietary needs. Um, so we're, we're, uh, we're really excited about that and we're gonna release the code to open source. So we're hoping that this thing really catches on nationally. And uh, is the inverse true? Are there people in the, in the medical system who now have got the United, United Us system or the Healthy Together system plugged into their EMR, so it's part of their workflow as well? So we don't have it tightly integrated with any of the EHRs here locally yet, but we expect to over the next, you know, whatever, six to 12 months. And, you, and you're there, so you may know something about that, I would guess. <laughs> something, yeah, something. <laughs> All right, well, thanks. Well, I've been doing with Jacob Ryder, who is the, uh, I'm not going to get this right, the CEO of the uh, better, of the uh, um, Healthy Alliance Independent Practice Association, which is the new one, um, and looking really looking forward to it. It's, it's a, one of the first 
I would say instantiations of putting together the whole idea of can you put the infrastructure for doing social determinants of health in there. And uh, funnily enough, we're running, I, I, I don't know if you've entered or if you're a finalist, but we entered, we've, we're running a challenge on social determinants of health right now for the Robert Johnson Foundation. So look forward to seeing there may be something in that that comes back toward, back, back your way. Anyway, um, Jacob, it's been great catching up with you. We really, really enjoyed talking to you and uh, good, good luck with the, new, uh, the, whole new, the whole new plan here in the whole new RPA. Thank you, Matthew. Great to be here.